can't be your friend, Cyrus. Not if you're friends with TJ. You're giving me an ultimatum? Buffy and Cyrus have a huge fight and Andy reconnects with Walker. Let's break down Season 2, Episode 17 of Andy Mac right here on What Happened. <laughs> What's going on, you lovely people? Lisa here, and welcome back to another Andy Mac recap. This week's episode is called A Walker to Remember. Yeah, a little play on words there with one of my fave teen romance movies, A Walk to Remember, with the twist because, well, Walker from Cyrus's Bar Mitzvah is back in the picture. Now, this episode gives all you Tyra shippers some more Cyrus and TJ, but because of that, Cyrus is left with a very hard decision. Now, before I get to my actual recap of the episode, I just want you to know I got some scoop on the show this past weekend. That's right. I got brand new interviews with a bunch of the cast because I got a chance to talk to a lot of them at the Radio Disney Music Awards. So if you missed those, you can check those out in the description. I'll have links there. We got Joshua talking about knowing Cyrus's endgame relationship. And we also have Peyton and Elizabeth Lee talking about the differences between, you know, Jonah and Walker. So be sure to go check those out. Now back to the recap. First, we're going to talk about Andy. Andy, Jonah, and Walker. So last we left off, we had Andy and Bex getting in a massive fight and Andy going to live with Bowie, at least for a night anyway. We pick up with Bex being super sad about Andy being gone and sleeping in her room and then calling Bowie the next morning to sneakily try to check in and see if Andy is there and ready to talk to her. Andy, however, has decided on her own to return home, but mainly it seems like it's because there's no clean towels at uh, Bowie's house, so I'm guessing Bowie's got your typical bachelor pad. I kind of wish we had seen that, though. I would have loved to have seen the dynamic of Andy living with Bowie. Jonah then shows up and asks Andy if she'll sit with him at the basketball game. And you know, Andy's like, yeah, sure, I was actually going to ask you the same thing. And Jonah's like, sweet, I got a date with Andy at a basketball game. Unfortunately, this poor boy's hopes and dreams are getting crushed when Andy's like, oh yeah, let me, um, let me call Cyrus and let him know to save some more seats. So yeah, Andy didn't understand exactly the connotation of what Jonah was asking because he wanted it to be a date and she was just like, oh, I thought you wanted to be part of this group thing. And then of course, when they get to the game, we got Bowie and Bex also joining them. So yeah, talk about the ultimate uh, date blocker there. After the game, Andy, Jonah, Bex, and Bowie stop by the record shop. We then see a little bit of flirting between Bowie and Bex to give those Bexy shippers some hope, and also Andy, who sees it and is pretty happy and has some more hope in her head, even though I don't think she's ever lost the hope there between Bowie and Bex. The girls then head off to go to the spoon to celebrate with Buffy, while Bowie keeps Jonah behind because he wants to check in on him about his panic attacks. Jonah says he's doing fine and hasn't had one lately, but is still scared because the last one came out of nowhere, so he never knows when they're gonna happen. Bowie has still been thinking a lot about how music really seemed to calm and center Jonas. So Bowie pulls out the first guitar he ever had and gives it to Jonah. Bowie also is so impressed with Jonah and he sees the potential there that Bowie sets up an audition with a really great music teacher he knows named Sid for 11 a.m. the next morning. The thing is, Bowie says that Jonah has to be on time, otherwise Sid won't see him because Sid's a pretty tough teacher, but also the best. And if Jonah can end up being one of Sid's students, music and all of that could change Jonah's life. Well, let's take a pause here for a second and head over to Andy and Walker. So after celebrating Buffy's win at the spoon, Andy goes back home. She's sitting on her bed, just chilling out when she gets a call on her phone or FaceTime from Walker of all people. And it kind of seems weird at first, like Andy's responding to Walker talking and he's like talking like no one's responding to him, kind of like a pre-recorded message. It's kind of a little weird and I would have been like, bye boy, you are strange. But Walker ends up hanging up and then calling back and asking Andy what she's doing today. So Andy goes to hang out with Walker. It turns out that Walker has a painting at one of his favorite galleries, which is kind of an art walk to showcase all the local artists. So Walker's invited her to, you know, check out his painting. And the two had this typical fun, happy, date, whatever, montage, as Andy keeps trying to guess which painting is Walker's. Walker then takes her to this blank canvas hanging in the wall and says, this is mine, and he says that he needs her help to paint something, otherwise he'll lose the space, he just hasn't been inspired. So we see the two team up and start painting, and end up with this kind of really cool rainbow circle piece. When they're done and satisfied with it, Andy and Walker both sign their names, and then Walker adds a little cartoon version of the two of them in the corner. And well, it turned out this was all just part of Walker's plan to hang out with Andy. Yeah, he wasn't really going to lose this space because art doesn't have a deadline, right? He just thought it would be something fun to do with her, and he was right. And it's like, well played, Walker. Well 
played. When Andy returns home, Bex asks her how her day was with Walker, and Annie seems pretty happy about it. But Bex, she can tell that Andy's feelings for Jonah might be fading, and she thinks Andy really needs to be honest with Jonah about her feelings, because she can also tell that Jonah has it pretty bad for Andy still. But Andy is quick on her feet and says she'll do that right after Bex is actually honest with her feelings for Bowie with Bowie. Yeah, well played. Well, it seems like Andy really might need to let Jonah down soon because this boy, like I said, has got it bad for her. Because the next day on the way to his audition, he walks by Walker and Andy's painting and he doesn't really pay attention at first, but then like I think it caught him out of the corner of his eye, the signatures, and he backtracks and he just drops his guitar and then he looks at his phone and sees that it is 11.04 and he is late to the audition and Bowie said to not be late for it. So a defeated Jonah just turns around and walks back. Home. First of all though, Jonah really kind of should have known to leave more of a cushion time if you have an audition that is that big with such a, you know, set deadline time like you cannot be later than 11. You show up at 1030. Yeah, then he wouldn't have got distracted and even if he got distracted, he uh, could have had some time there to, to cushion there. But I probably feel like even if he had been early and seen that painting, he still would have walked the other way. Now let's go over to the real drama of this episode related to Buffy, Cyrus, and TJ. Cyrus has Buffy's cheering team ready to go at the basketball game complete with megaphones to annoy the crap out of every single person in that tiny gym. Cyrus is getting everyone pumped up but he gets distracted though when he looks over and sees TJ in his regular school clothes watching from beside the bleachers. Cyrus goes and asks TJ if he's okay and you know what at first TJ's his standoffish jerk self and I'm like Cyrus you can find someone better than this. When they watch Buffy score and everyone starts cheering for him and so loud TJ gets kind of upset and leaves and Cyrus goes after him and Buffy does see this and is confused about it. Actually Everyone's confused about it, asking, you know, did you know that TJ and Cyrus were even friends with each other? TJ and Cyrus sit down and TJ reveals that he's failing math so he can't play. And when Cyrus suggests that TJ get another tutor, TJ says that he needs just a different brain because Buffy's figured out that he may have this math dyslexia and he's and she keeps bugging him to talk to Mr. Coleman about it and he just thinks he's stupid and just wants a new brain. TJ's also worried about his reputation and doesn't want that, you know, he has some kind of learning disability to go around the school. Cyrus can see that TJ is actually really upset over all of this and he just tells TJ that, you know what, Mr. Coleman can't fail TJ for having a learning disability so he really should talk to Mr. Coleman about it and TJ's kind of like you know what maybe you're right and this you know what means that Buffy has been right all along so at least this time when TJ goes to tell Buffy you're right he'll actually mean it because if you remember episodes back Cyrus told TJ you're right are like Buffy's favorite words and he's and TJ's has been using them to take advantage of Buffy ever since. Tyrus shippers then get a cute moment as TJ says that Buffy may have been right, but it was Cyrus who really helped him, and TJ shares his cheese puffs with Cyrus. And I mean, I don't like sharing my cheese puffs, my Cheetos, so you gotta be pretty special if you're gonna like give some of your favorite food up, right? So there's a connection here. Well, because Buffy saw Cyrus go after TJ, Cyrus ended up missing the entire game that Buffy played in. And obviously this is the first time Buffy's played a complete game without TJ and been able to show off her skills. And Buffy's pretty pissed that her best friend was not there in the stands watching. Buffy is not happy and Cyrus knows it, so he's trying to apologize, but also show her how TJ needed a friend in that moment because Buffy had everyone else in, this cheer, in the stands cheering for her. I feel like it was kind of just because it was TJ that Cyrus went after. I feel like if it was anybody else that Cyrus went to go help, Buffy would have understood. But because she has such a vendetta against TJ, yeah, she's not going to let Cyrus live this down. But the two end up making up and head off to the spoon for some baby taters. The next day at school, Buffy is still on her high after winning the game, but it all comes crashing down when TJ says he wants to talk to her. He says he's actually back on the team now because he came clean to Mr. Coleman and told him about his dyscalculia, or however you say that, or his math dyslexia. And Buffy kind of is like, okay, suck it up. She welcomes him back, and you can tell this is really hard for her. And she doesn't want to be happy for him, but she's trying a little bit. TJ then tells Buffy, though, that she needs to go talk to Mr. Coleman, too, because he also told him that Buffy did all his homework and that but that he's a changed man now in an open book and she said, you know, so he's like, I told Mr. Coleman that I'd made you do my homework. But Buffy isn't really buying this and she calls him out for lying and TJ's kind of like, oh, yeah, well, like I said, I'm trying to change and it's that evil side of TJ we see come out, the manipulative side, the side that I really don't like and the side that I don't want Cyrus messing around with. 
like I said, TJ says that he's trying to change and that Buffy is right. And those two words are what puts Buffy over the edge. And she finally puts two and two together about how TJ has been manipulating her. And the only way that he would know to do it with those words is if someone really close to her told him to say that. And she walks away upset and it's kind of like, run Cyrus run. We then see Buffy walking with Cyrus and we learn that she's been suspended from the basketball team for doing TJ's homework, you little devil TJ. Yeah, and now she won't be able to play on the team at all in any games before she moves away. Now I know a lot of you seem to like TJ or at least Cyrus and TJ together, but come on guys, you gotta see how manipulative and a bully this kid is is like why not just come clean and be like i was having trouble buffy helped me out with my homework we didn't mean anything bad by it they could have easily both gotten off but instead tj kind of saw this as his saying i'm the victim here i have this learning disability and you know what buffy was just like i want to do your homework so that i wouldn't fail but i don't think he's played it that way and she ended up being the one punished for it. And it's like, I know Buffy can be cocky and whatever, but she did not deserve to be suspended at, especially when she was trying to actually be a bigger person and help TJ and help him get help for this learning disability that he has. Anyway, Buffy confronts Cyrus and Cyrus knows that he's in pretty big trouble. And Buffy basically gives Cyrus an ultimatum. She says she can't be his friend if he's friends with TJ, so it's one or the other and Cyrus has to decide. Buffy then turns her back and walks away and we see and hear Cyrus yelling after her that he chooses Buffy, but Buffy just continues walking. So Cyrus is really caught between this rock and a hard place. Will he choose TJ, who he seems to really connect with, but only when they're together. TJ has this whole other personality when he's not with Cyrus. Can he? Um, truly get TJ to change. I feel like that's not possible, but they're still young. Who knows? Or will Cyrus choose Buffy, even though she's actually moving away soon and won't be around? So will that lifelong friendship still have such an impact on him? Which bond is stronger here? But yeah, relationship triangles everywhere in this episode when it comes to love and friendship. We have Andy caught between Walker and Jonah, and Cyrus caught between Buffy and TJ. And it seems like this is the drama that's gonna drive the rest of the season, or at least the next episode. So let's take a look. This is my friend Miranda, and this is Morgan. Say hello. No. Do you see anything you like? That's pretty. This is off limits, but you can use anything else you like. Bye, Morgan. Oh, no, 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 no. She took it. All right, so it looks like Bowie is actually still seeing that lady from Judy Bloom's Miranda and he's about and he's ready to introduce her and her daughter to Andy and that does not go so well. Plus the drama with Buffy and Cyrus continues. Are you avoiding me? You betrayed me. How did I betray you? I can't explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. And it's so much drama that it seems to cause Jonah to have a panic attack, which means that these two will learn about Jonah's anxiety, and Andy will still be one of the only people to not know about it. We need it. you guys right now. You can't fight. You have to stop fighting. Now the pancakes are burning. I'm having another panic attack. <laughs> Woo, who knew that a Disney show could have so much drama, right? So, are you on Buffy or Cyrus' side with this whole argument? I mean, Cyrus did tell TJ how to manipulate Buffy, even though he probably didn't mean for TJ to do what he did with that knowledge. Should Buffy be that mad at Cyrus? And will Andy choose Walker or Jonah, or should she choose either one of them? Should they all just be friends and she be single for a while? Who knows? Weigh in down in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this episode. And hit that subscribe and thumbs up if you like what you see. Then be sure to click right over here to check out with my latest interviews with the cast for some of the great details you can expect or what they want to see happen with the rest of the season and season three that they're currently filming. My name's Lisa. Thanks for hanging out with me, talking all things Andy Mac, and I'll see you next time.